Hello, loyal ghouls and ghosts, one and all. The Watch for One Year. It's Halloween time, my second favorite time of the year behind Christmas. And this year, I'm going to be doing something a little interesting. See, it's an idea I've had for quite some time now. So I ripped the fabric of space and time itself to find an alternate reality where it happened. An alternate reality Goosebump series. One where Arl Stein was a monster lover and all of his books were meant for an older audience. I guess you could also say a more cultured audience. A universe where the Goosebumps book series were all monster lover series and still just as wildly popular as the one here with 62 entries in the main series alone with such classics as Monster Blood Love and Ghost Nude Beach. And now I'm here to present you with my sultry voice one such entry and read it for you all to enjoy a saucy little tale about a man living in the sleepy little California town of Pasadena and how one day he wished for love, snow, and an older woman to help care for his children. And he got his wish in all the best and worst ways. So sit back, relax, and listen as I read to you this little story called The Abominable Snow Milf of Pasadena. All my life, I've been a cold kid. I've loved snow and wearing winter clothes and Christmas. My name is Gordon Blake, but I prefer just Blake. I spent my 33 years in sun, sand, and chlorine central. I've only felt cold maybe four times in my entire life. Probably more if you count air-conditioned supermarkets, and I do not. It doesn't snow in supermarkets. I always miss snow and haven't felt it in forever. That was until I met her. Let me back up a bit though. I live in Pasadena, where it's always sunny and warm. Some people think I'm so lucky to live here. And yeah, I guess in some ways, I am pretty lucky. I have a good job and two amazing kids. But it gets... Well, lonely, if you catch my drift. I used to have a girlfriend, but the second my kids popped out of her seat, disappeared, and wanted nothing to do with us. My kids are still great, though. Little Jackie and Kayla. They're little snow bugs just like me. I'm glad to see they take after me more than their mother. But I'm sure you've had enough backstory. You want to get to this so-called adventure, right? Well, let me take it back to where it all began. It happened when I was about 28 during one of California's worst heat waves ever. And then I got the call that would change my life. I was in my dark room working on photos, and I gotta admit, it was probably one of the best grizzly pictures I ever took. And one teddy bear, because my girl wanted a picture of her own pet bear. I finished the last pic, and I put it up to dry before I mailed it off to the magazine firm that asked for these. When all of a sudden, I felt my phone go off. I was getting a phone call, but from a number I didn't quite recognize. Of course, this happens all the time, so I decided to answer it, hoping it was a client. Hello? Yes, is this Gordon Blake? Yes, it is. How can I help you? I've heard you're a great nature photographer, and we need one of the best for a special article. Well, whatever it is, I'm not sure if I can take it. I'm still working on pictures at the moment. Well, I'll be paying you very well, triple your last job, and you won't even need to find what you're taking pictures of. I won't lie, I nearly fell over my development table. I was so shocked. That can't be right. Three times the last payment? I make decent money. And to make three times that for only one picture and I don't even need the picture of it? I'd be set for Christmas and then some if I took this. So I humored him. Okay, you have my interest. What is it? But before I say more, rest assured this is not a prank caller. I am sending you to Alaska. I want photos of one of the most elusive creatures. A Yeti. I honestly felt like I was going crazy. A Yeti? Like the abominable snowman, big hairy white ape, aka not real. This had to be a prank. I was about to hang up until I got a text from my bank. Needless to say, he was very serious. So the next day, I managed to get a babysitter on incredibly short notice, and I got on my flight to Alaska with my little equipment bag. Whether I found a safe or not, I didn't care because Alaska means snow and cold. And you can imagine how happy it was when I finally sat down. It was beautiful. A white ocean of little fuzzy balls of joy. It was even snowing when I arrived, falling from the sky and making it hard to see the rest of the airport. I honestly couldn't care less though. I was just too ecstatic. Heck, I was half tempted to just start making snow angels right there. But I knew I had to get to my log cabin, so cooler heads prevailed. My own regret is that I wish my kids could have seen this, but they insisted it was just me for this. After some searching, I found the guy who was holding onto my dog sled. Apparently where I was staying was way off the beaten path, so it was the only way to get there. So he handed him off, I shook his hand, and I rode off into the Alaskan night with my dogs. 
I honestly almost forgot what I was actually taking pictures of for this brief moment. I was just lost in the aesthetic beautifulness of the winter night. It was a rather cozy cabin, all things considered though. The best way I can describe it was that it was extremely rustic, exactly what you would expect a cabin in the woods to be like. Yet very well maintained, like they were expecting me. Yeah, I know that's a stupid thing to add, but it's true. After a long flight like that, I definitely needed to warm up at least a little bit as my body was finally catching up to how cold it was outside. So I lit a fire and settled in with some nice relaxing tea. But that night, I want to say maybe 1 in the morning, the dogs were going crazy. They started barking like mad and I heard something big run off past the cabin. And I mean big, it caused the cabin to shake a tiny bit. What was that? A man? A monster? A gorilla? Whatever it was, it had giant feet. Because the snow had giant footprints right around my cabin, bigger than a gorilla's. When I was out there, I noticed the snow had slowed down just enough that I could actually track it down to its footprints. Whatever this thing was, I had to find it. I hit up the dogs and headed off ASAP. Rushing off for whatever snow was still coming down covered the tracks and they disappeared forever. But I got more lucky than I could have possibly imagined as I managed to track it to a cave. A nice small little cave entrance, almost like one that had been covered by snow and was hidden. But I had arrived just in time to see it for myself. It was kind of amazing, the whole thing looked like it was carved by hand. I clicked on a flashlight I had taken with me and I headed inside. And with my flashlight I walked closer and closer, deeper and deeper into this cave. And soon the insides were lit up like magic by my flashlight. Blue ice glistened all around me. It was quite literally like an igloo built right into the mountain from the most sparkling blue ice I could have possibly asked. And there she was, the monster in question and the one that would change my life. She was extremely tall, about maybe between 9 or 10 feet, putting most basketball players to complete shame. With pale blue skin like she was frostbit all over. And her body was covered in extremely fluffy white fur, like she was a living shag pillow. It looked so soft and furry like that of a polar bear or even a puppy. The only part with no fur was her frontal area and her... <clears throat> backside. That part was covered in an ice bra and underwear. Believe me people, I wish I was making this up. I admit I was shocked and I gasped falling backwards right on my butt, which obviously startled her as she looked over at me. On the bright side, it gave me a better look at her. Despite her very monstrously backside appearance, her face was still very humanoid as was a lot of her features. If I had to guess by comparing her to a human, I would have said she was on the older side. She also had a very motherly figure. Large D-cups and a chubby but curvy figure, one you'd expect to see, well, on a mother. Whether she was one, well, I didn't see children, so I was just guessing she was old. Oh, hello there. She spoke in a rather mature voice. I guess I was stunned because I just kind of stood there not getting up or doing anything. Heck, I wasn't even thinking anything. What could I think about? I was standing in front of an actual yeti. So she took matters into her own hands as she stomped over and grabbed me by my coat's hoodie and gently pulled me up like I was a little puppy dog. Well, aren't you a cute little thing? Do you have a name? That finally got me as I shook my head and mustered up all the strength I could to say something. And so I said, uh, Gordon, Gordon Blake. I was at least glad I managed to muster something out as it did make her giggle. Though surprisingly, little if any steam left her mouth as she giggled. No, most of that steam was coming from me as next thing I know, she pulled me in and hugged me into her cleavage. Feeling her body was so nice. It was soft and yet cold and warm at the same time. Like that burning feeling you get from ice where you know it's cold but it's also kind of burning like it's hot. Believe me, you would have to feel it to believe it. I'm not describing it well and I know that. But I was also not expecting it so I let out muffled squeals into her chest. Thankfully before I could suffocate she let me go and dropped me down and readjusted my coat. Is there a reason you broke into my house? She smiled putting her hands on her hips. Uh, well, truthfully, I was supposed to take pictures of you for a magazine. Oh, you wanted to take pictures of me? She giggles as she struck a pose, showing off her backside to me in her ice bikini. 
I never thought I would be attracted to such a giant monster, but I did love the sight, I'm not ashamed to say. So much so that I blushed deeply at this. Like enough that I was actually steaming. So much so that it actually melted a little snow above me and caused it to fall on top of me. Not exactly the most subtle way to say that you're interested, but I think she picked up on it anyway. Didn't think that's how this night was gonna go, but I'm not complaining. So I wiped off the snow and sat on her ice bed. It was completely made of ice, but there was at least a bare pelt so my butt wasn't sticking to it. So, uh, do Yetis have names? Not really, but some of the locals call me Mindy. Well then, I'll just call you Mindy then. It's a lot easier than Yeti or Abominable Snowman or whatever. I'm Abominable? Well, that's a new one. <laughs> she giggled as she sat next to me. She put her hand on me as I couldn't help but inch closer. So is it just you out here all by yourself? I asked. I guess I wanted to know more about her. I mean, not every day you get to sit next to something like this. I wanted to connect to this big furry woman. Though I admit I was extremely worried when her smile disappeared for a bit. It's just me. Yetis are kind of rare, honestly. At least out here, anyway. Most of them live in the Himalayas, she said. That's a long way from home for you. What are you doing in Alaska? Well, it's a long story, but to make it short, when I was just a little baby, I was taken by an Alaskan tourist. He found me abandoned and took me from my home and back to Alaska to his home. But as you can see, Yetis have a tendency to grow after a while, and I became big and strong enough that I broke free and escaped. I guess I was just lucky I grew up in a cold place where I could properly grow. She said as her smile finally returned to her. I weakly returned the smile as I was least glad she was happy again. So wait, can you not survive in the heat or something? No, no, I can not now. When Yetis are young, they need the cold air so they can adapt and develop their cold bodies. Now I could go to the equator and be completely fine. <laughs> so you could say move to America, perhaps? Yeah, I could. I've thought about it, honestly, but I'm not really sure how I would. I looked this woman over and I guess things just kept going crazy as I mustered up all the courage I could and I just blurted out, Would you like to come home with me? A number of reactions rushed through my head. Being slapped, being pushed off the bed, being laughed at, shock. What I didn't expect was for her to bring me close and ask, it wouldn't be a problem, would it? Did I just hear that right? Was she actually considering coming home with me? Well, I wasn't about to wait and see if she was joking, so I kept going and said, I can tell the company that sent me that I can bring you back for some better photos. I'm sure they would have to let you come back after that point. They may not believe me, but I will make them, trust me. It would be nice to actually meet more humans. I do love humans, actually. I feel I should warn you, I live somewhere hot. Like, it rarely snows levels of hot. This actually got the giggling reaction I was expecting as she just got off of her bed and went over to the dresser. She bent over looking for something as I looked away trying to avoid eye contact. Hey, I didn't want more of the igloo to fall on my head, okay? Just cause she was leaving her house doesn't mean I have to wreck it. She then showed me a snowball. I kinda blinked in surprise wondering what is this? So I got up and got a much closer look at it. It looked like a normal snowball to me. A perfectly round one, mind you. What is this? I asked her. One day you'll see. For now, I'll pack up. You make the call, she said as she stomped off, putting the snow globe in some kind of makeshift nappy sack made from a bear pelt. If nothing else, she was a resourceful hunter. So I pulled out my cell phone, and surprisingly, I had full bars. Must be Yeti magic, I guess, muttering to myself. Admittedly, it was only after I made the call that I realized, is he even going to be awake? It's one in the morning. But surprisingly, he was. I guess it was a late night shift at the office. Hello, is that you, Blake? Yes, hello, it's me, sir. I have something that will interest you. You know how you sent me to get pictures of a Yeti? Yes, I remember that. I figured you'd be resting after that long flight of yours. Well, here's the thing, sir. I kind of found one. And she's willing to come to the studio. I could even tell through the phone the head was dumbfounded at what I said. And of course he didn't believe me for even a second. But the second I took a picture of her and texted it to him, I was on hold for all of five minutes before he came back and said, You have a flight leaving tomorrow morning. 
Tomorrow morning did mean that I would have to wait for the rest of the night, but that was fine as I was finally getting tired after this adventure. But there was no way I'd be able to sleep in an ice cave like this. Luckily, Mindy was very understanding and actually decided to come with me back to my cabin. It was admittedly a bit of a challenge getting the dogs to calm down and not bite her. But finally, they let her run beside me, and good lord this woman was fast. I guess a large frame means you're very good at running in the snow. After some travel though, we finally made it back to my cabin. And the frame at the door nearly collapsed when she didn't duck her head. She just looked around very calmly with a nice smile and just said, Hmm, quite homey. You have a nice home. <laughs> no, no, this isn't my home. It's I'm just staying here while I was, well, looking for you at this point. You'll be seeing my papa home tomorrow, actually. Oh, lovely. Well, I'm sure you probably need some rest. <sighs> yeah, I suppose I do, actually. And so I quickly got my coat off and changed into something more comfortable. Although I was apparently going to have a big fluffy bed as she was already laying in it. She patted the side next to her as if she beckoned me to join her. And yep, my tomato side kind of came back again after that. So I very meekly and carefully walked over and sat on the edge of the bed. Before I was grabbed and hugged into her. I panicked for all of like one minute before I finally was just too tired and fell asleep in her. Surprisingly, despite her cold frame, it was probably one of the best sleeps I had in a long time. I wish I could say the flight back was uneventful, but it was interesting getting her on the plane in the first place. First things first, I had to actually get her dressed into something more appropriate and not just a full bikini. I had only one coat that was just big enough to fit her, and it was less a coat and more like a dress skirt. Like seriously, with how much it rode up, it could be mistaken for a cocktail dress if it wasn't all well, poofy and Cody. As you can guess, it showed off a lot of her curves. The coat basically showed off her curvy body and all it took was one lift and anyone there could have seen her good blue butt. I know this because while we were waiting for TSA checks, some teen kids, I guess on a dare if you had to ask me, lifted her back up and making her flash them. She wasn't even phased though as she just casually booty bumped him away. It made them go running and it made me die on the floor laughing. Then after that, we got her some proper human food. Nothing special, just some burgers. I say that, but she basically ordered the entire menu and ate it in like 5 seconds. I'm talking a fish sandwich, a chicken sandwich, a double, triple, a big one, all the fries on all the sides, and 3 or 4 sodas. All eaten in the span of only a couple seconds. Meanwhile, I barely even got to finish half my fries by the time she was done. And it was also just enough time for me to realize this before she said, Can I get some more? This woman is going to eat me out of house and home, I just know it. And then of course, there was the fact that the gate to get her on was way too small, so she had to crouch just to get in. Then came the most harrowing problem of them all, the flight chairs. They were way too small for both her and me to fit on. They were at least big enough to fit her though, so we compromised. I sat in her lap the entire flight. I won't lie, I kind of felt like a kid again. I just sat on her lap as she gave me pets. All things considered though, I had nothing to complain about. I kind of loved it. But thankfully and finally, we arrived in Pasadena. I was honestly dreading the poor girl was going to be sweltering when we got there. But she actually thought it was refreshing. But of course at that point the coat had to come off. And I had to quickly scramble to give her something to put on. So I just handed her one of the animal pelts he brought with and makeshifted a little bikini out of a wolf pelt. And let me tell you the looks from people. I want you to imagine in your head this tall behemoth of a woman with blue skin and white fur in nothing but a wolf pelt bikini. Going down Pasadena, the looks were priceless, but not nearly as priceless as my kids though. As the second she stepped into my home and the kids got a good look at her, I could tell their first thought was, is this new mommy? And funny thing is, she kind of acted like a great mom to them. She spoke very well and kind with a very sweet voice. She treated them well. She even gave them rides on her giant biceps. Honestly, I thought in that moment, maybe this could work. 
I wish I could say the photo shoot was more interesting, but it was exactly what you expected. No, the really interesting thing happened later that year, as five months had passed and Mindy had basically been staying with us. And my kids' birthday were literally the next day. They were going to be getting a lot more gifts on Christmas, but they were going to get at least one for each of them on their birthday. I figured that was the best compromise so I didn't destroy my wallet. However, Mindy brought her own gift to them. As I had just handed out my gifts to my two kids, I was wondering where Mindy even was as he hadn't been around for a while. But suddenly I heard her voice outside as he called, Can you all come out here? She yelled in a happy voice into the night as we all went outside as fast as we could. She had this big smile on her face which admittedly did concern me a little bit, but whatever she had planned, I was ready for it. And so she leaned down and looked at my kids and said, Let's say this year we have some snow. My kids looked so wide and happy that they jumped for joy. I was admittedly confused as hell though. That was until she pulled out one of her hands, the very snowball I saw her take with her. Same one of that day five months ago. I was still very confused though, as I had no idea what she had planned for this. She then gave me a wink and tossed it into some clouds as it suddenly popped and the clouds started snowing. Yes, snow fell down from the clouds, blanketing all of Pasadena. For the first time ever, it snowed. And we didn't even have to go up north to get it. It was right here in the middle of California. It was honestly beautiful seeing it. I had no words for how ecstatic my kids honestly were. Even the temperature dropped enough that it would stay the next day. As we just stared into the night sky with all this snow, I couldn't help but look over at this woman. And honestly, that was the point. The exact point where I realized, one way or another, I was going to make this woman my wife. And I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today, my boils and ghouls. Yes, yes, I know. I hope you will all still enjoy this, though. Needless to say, though, this universe has an interesting take on the series. So please let me know if you enjoy this, and I will make it a series and brave the void of multi-dimensions to get another book. But I will say, these little books aren't cheap and neither is breaking dimensional time and space to do it. So please consider donating to my Patreon, I'll even let you guys help decide which book I get next. And of course, don't forget all the standard stuff, make sure you like this video as it's gonna let me know you guys like this. It'll also make people see it a lot more. And leave a comment down below on what you thought about this. And of course how I can improve and all that stuff. Oh, and before I go, one more thing. Happy Month of Frights, my loyal ghoulish watchers. And I'll see you guys next time.